Well, it happened. I'm not really sure how it happened, but it happened. Nintendo Switch 2 is back in the news. Uh, what Nintendo's doing next is back in the news, and this time it's back in the news because of Nintendo themselves, which is quite interesting. So before we talk about that, I want to remind you that we're on our road to 100,000 subscribers, and if we can get to 100,000 subscribers, by the time Tears of the Kingdom comes out on May 12th, we'll be giving away a collector's edition of Tears of the Kingdom. The steelbook, the pin set, the art book, the poster. Oh my gosh, it's such an amazing collector's edition. So what are you waiting for? Why don't you subscribe to the channel and let's get into today's news. So, look, we don't know when the Nintendo Switch 2 is coming. We don't know when Nintendo's moving on. Some people are speculating this year. We've had manufacturing stuff saying, oh, maybe it's going into mass production. It could be next year. Nick Kay kind of suggested that they're hearing it will be in the second half of next year, a.k.a. holiday 2024. You have others out there pointing out that, oh, Nintendo said something about seven to ten years of Switch in the past. So, you know, we're not going to get anything for another three years. And we're looking more like 2025, 2026. Look, we have no idea. The truth of the matter is none of us know when this thing is coming. It's like when we talked about the specs of the T239, the likely chip for this thing. We talked about Switch 2 specs. Oh, well, you don't know. You're right. We don't know exact details because, of course, we're talking about a system that hasn't even been confirmed to exist beyond Nintendo stating that things like Nintendo Switch Online and Nintendo accounts will be forwards compatible and them just outright saying we're working on new hardware. But... That hasn't stopped Nintendo from talking about this again. There was an interview with, man, the, the Nintendo of America president, Doug Bowser. I don't know how much abridged he is on things, but he's obviously more in the know than any of us. And this happened through the Associated Press, and they asked him, when is the next Switch coming out? What kinds of features or new capabilities would you like to see? Doug Bowser responded and said, as we enter the seventh year for the Nintendo Switch, sales are still strong. They're actually in the seventh year right now, but I don't know when the interview was conducted. I think we still have a very strong lineup coming. Interesting words, considering it's Zelda, Pikmin, and then what, right? Anyways, as Mr. Furukawa, Nintendo President Shintaro Furukawa said recently, we're entering uncharted territory with the platform. It's exciting to see that demand is still there. So nothing to announce on any future console or device, but we're still feeling very bullish about the Nintendo Switch. It's a pretty typical PR response. Hey, we're not going to talk about what's next, but hey, we're feeling bullish on Switch, which isn't exactly what Shintura Furukawa inferred. In fact, he said this next fiscal year, he doesn't think they can sell as many Switches as the current fiscal year, and they're trying to sell second, third, fourth Switches to people. Uh, Furukawa didn't seem to be that bullish, to be completely honest, but whatever. This is just an interpretation from somebody who's basically going to always have a positive spin on Nintendo. He goes on to say, I should be careful about what I personally would like to see in a new Switch, uh, which is fine. Obviously, you are the president of Nintendo of America. You can't put personal desires out there publicly because that puts pressure on Nintendo to implement them internally. That being said, what I can share is that one of the reasons that even going into year seven, we feel very confident that the Switch can have a strong performance over the next few years is that it's still truly that unique device that you can play in a variety of ways at home, on the go. One of the things we look at always is how we can surprise and delight, how we can introduce new unique ways of playing that's always in front of our mind. I find this to be an interesting statement for a couple of reasons. One, I don't think Doug Bowser, uh, this, this is a really typical Doug Bowser response. Uh, one, Doug Bowser barely talks, but when he does, it's going to be a bunch of fluff. If you're going to ask him the hard questions, the questions everyone wants to know, he's going to talk around it. He's going to pretend everything's hunky dory and he's going to talk about the long-term future of the current platform. This, this is our expected responses. There's not really a lot there other than, him noting about introducing unique ways of playing and, and this whole next three years thing. What I find fascinating about that, because that, that reiterates a public statement from Furukawa in the past about seven to ten years, if we're in year seven, three more years, get to year ten, is that he doesn't outright deny that there's a new Switch coming. He says, we have nothing to announce, but they're feeling bullish on Switch. Switch is a family of systems. This, this was announced 
ages ago. Switch is a family of systems. Releasing a more powerful system that is still referred to as a type of Nintendo Switch could still fit within that family of systems. So it's very interesting that the word choice here was what it was. It wasn't outright denying that there's a new platform coming. It also wasn't like pretending they're not working on something because they've already announced it. I, I just find a lot of this talk to be fascinating uh, as I as I sit here and ponder the future of Nintendo because we're clearly entering a period of time where it's safer than ever. Like we were talking about a new Switch, you know, 2019, 2018, but right now in year seven of Switch, because we are in the midst of year seven, I think it's safer to talk about a new platform now than ever because there is going to be something coming next. We don't necessarily know 100% what it's going to be. We hope it has backwards compatibility. Uh, we know it's going to have Nintendo accounts because Nintendo straight up said it would. We know there was some redacted system or something in this whole legal thing dealing with Activision Blizzard when talking about the 10-year deal with Nintendo and talking about Nintendo Switch Online and being compatible with the Switch and blank. So look, we, we know that there there's a lot of rumblings out there, manufacturing rumblings, Nintendo ninjas going after people in China who have been leaking things for years, which why are they going after them now instead of last year? Well, maybe because the stuff they were leaking before wasn't that big of a deal, but now Nintendo has a new system coming and they don't want all of that leaking out because they want to announce it and reveal it and surprise people uh, when they feel the time is right. Of course, if there's dev units out there, we'll probably get leaks from developers anyways, which happens with every system, right? The PlayStation 6 had this happen. The Xbox Series had this happen. Technically, the Nintendo Switch had this happen. We we had rumblings from developers that it was using a Tegra X1, that it was uh, a hybrid system. But people still lived in denial and thought it might be something else just because of the history of Nintendo and some other contractual things that existed. What I do know is, in a few days... This is sort of a bonus story. We're going to probably get some new news on Tears of the Kingdom. I don't know if that it's going to be groundbreaking news, but Nintendo Dream Magazine has published the cover of their upcoming issue that releases on the 20th, and they noted uh, that they have a story in there deep diving into aspects of Tears of the Kingdom. Now, all these aspects are aspects we know about, but they may have some additional details. So it is kind of neat. We might have some a little bit of news and a little bit of news about Tears of the Kingdom coming in the form of a magazine. Who thought in 2023 we'd be waiting on the publication of a magazine still to get game news? But that might be a thing that happens here this week. So we'll be we'll be keeping our uh, our, our head to the ground. Actually, I think that's like early next week, right? The 20th of Monday, something like that. But I look, guys, I am excited for what is happening at Nintendo, whether it's Tears of the Kingdom, whether it's Pikmin 4, whether it's the Metroid Prime Remaster Ghost Drop, whether it is uh, Bayonetta Origins that, that, that just had all its reviews drop, whether it has to do with aspects of Nintendo, like the future of their hardware, and obviously Zelda. Da, 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 da. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry if I hurt your ears there. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, this is my uh, second attempt at a video today, edited in Final Cut. Here's hoping that it went well. Uh, we will not be live streaming tonight because we ran into a problem. Uh, our roadcaster somehow got wiped when connecting it to the Mac today. So we had to reformat and we lost everything. I have no way to live stream right now uh, in an effective manner. So... We will not be streaming tonight, but we'll have it all fixed up for the podcast tomorrow. Remember, we got Jake Randall coming on the show tomorrow, uh, and we'll be back with a regular podcast this Thursday. But hey, you got to get a bonus video today, so at least you did get double the fun. You guys have a good rest of your evening.